Hello, my name is Stetson, and this is a hideous monster I made last week, but why did I do such a thing? Recently, I was invited by Miscast to join a very excellent and weird collab thing called Monster Bash. I joined a bunch of my other favorite artists slash hobby people on YouTube, and we all individually Frankensteined our own monster children from a batch of randomly drawn monster parts with the goal of turning them all into one cohesive beast. This is actually round two of Monster Bash, but this time it's bigger, thicker, meatier. It's a butt! I got a butt! After this, be sure to watch the rest of the monster videos in the playlist below, but for now you should just... Actually, yeah, you should just stop watching mine and go watch the others right now. They're all horribly beautiful and beautifully horrible. The first task was for each person to contribute 20 hand-drawn monster parts on these cards. Now when I think monster, I tend to think very large. Maybe classic kaiju, cool dinosaur, giant robots. So that's what I contributed for my monster parts. There are so many amazingly talented artists in this group, and here's just a taste of some of the cards, but as someone that hasn't drawn since 7th grade, most of my time was spent trying to figure out where to put the pen down on the paper. Egg. After that, I chopped out all the cards, which was practically a whole tree, gave them a good shuffle, then met up with the team to draw our random monster bod components. You want to do seven? Okay, we're doing seven. Yes! Seven, three, two, one, go! And here is the exquisite corpse I scary rigged together. I've recently had kaiju on my mind, so that's the vibe I wanted to channel for my monster. Something that could fit into an old Showa or Heisei Godzilla film, or a monster of the week in a Power Rangers episode. The jetpack was the card that interested me first, since I had a couple Gundam kits sitting around. I'm expanding the jetpack card in my head to be the entire torso, so we're gonna go full Gundam bod, then we'll just add an actual jetpack later. I got lucky and drew my own raptor claw, so this is what I'm going to use for the legs. By the way, how do you JP fans feel about dino damage? As a kid, I was pretty sure a visible spine meant you'll probably die soon, and I didn't like that. I need these beautiful legs, so it's time for more dino damage. Jurassic Park fans, please avert your eyes. I feel really bad about destroying this toy, but just so you know, it's canon in the first film. They should all be destroyed. I was working quick through this kit bash, so my main glue method for everything was super glue with some baking soda to accelerate and strengthen the bond. For the jetpack, I could have used more Gundam bits, but I had these tubes from the inside of a shampoo pump bottle, which I sanded down to add texture and to give the super glue tiny plastic fragments to grip onto. One of my other cards was this one, which I'm choosing to interpret as feathers, which I have these from my Gundam bits box. I'm almost certain the card wasn't intended to be feathers, but I like having wings to complement the jetpack. To attach the legs to the Gundam skirt here, I'm using super glue and baking soda, and also too much baking soda. To add some details to my jetpack, I'm using a technique with some plasticard here for adding rivets, which I learned from Bill Making Stuff, one of the best scratch builders I know. You should go watch his channel. Basically, you just take a push pin, stab it 70% of the way through the card without it going all the way through, and it leaves a nice little rivet indent. For the head, I'm going to combine this lovely axe face card with this beautiful nose, and since I don't have the parts to kit bash it, I figured I'd sculpt it using some Super Sculpey. For a brief moment, it looked like a Pacific Rim design until I started adding the nose and the deep and wide nostrils. To unify the look of the head with the raptor legs, I reserved this raptor back, which I'm using to texture the skin and the clay. The axe face card was also covered in eyes, so I'm going to use a few of these glass eyes I have on each side of the head. And then to blend those eyes in, I'm blending in some thin clay snakes to make a few sets of eyelids. After baking, I covered the eyes in some blue poster tack to protect them during painting, and then I tried to figure out a color scheme. I've been staring at these pink and teal lights this whole time while filming, so it reminded me of Brush for Hire, who I think is the absolute best when it comes to pink and teal. 
So that's the color scheme I'm going to loosely attempt even though I don't have a very good selection of pinks and purples right now. I'm going for blue for the skin, doing a dark blue undercoat and a light blue overcoat. I guess that would be sort of a dark blue, light blue zenithal highlight. But the nose is going to be a perfect shade of Wario pink. I laid down some black gloss on the body in the jetpack, then decided to use my most expensive paint, an iridescent magenta. But I really blew it and I didn't shake out the paint enough, and also used too much air out of the airbrush to dry it between coats. So I got some real wicked orange peel cracking in the paint. I kind of want to pretend that it was intentional because the texture looks kind of cool, but I figured it out and improved the other paint job on the torso. To complement my most expensive paint, I'm using my cheapest paint, which is this nice 79 cent tube of magenta. I'm thankful that I heavily sanded the jetpack since the silver dry brushing is now catching in all those good scratches. I manicured the raptor's skin with a white dry brushing, then a little white eye shadow as a highlight for all six eyes. And then here's the exciting reveal of the poster tack peel to make sure the paint didn't seep in through the crevices. Nice. Lots and lots of baking soda and super glue for this oversized head. And then to power up the jetpack here, we're going to fill it up with crystals, which I'm making from hot glue. All you do is slice out some cool crystal shapes, and you don't even need glue, you just melt your crystals together. But these hot glue crystals are a little too cloudy right now, so we need to add some clarity. So to do that, go pour yourself a nice hot cup of water flavored tea, contemplate your role as an indigo child, and then quickly dip your crystal into the <laughs> quickly dip your crystal into the water and it makes it nice and shiny. I think they don't look too bad, and they especially don't look too bad when you cheat and hit them with pink and teal lighting from either side, like I am right now. My last card is this very gooey wet card, which would look great right here. I'm using more hot glue, this time in its dripping form to create a sinus infection for the monster. And with that detail, that makes it done. Time for show and tell. Do we have any volunteers? I feel like a teacher. I'll go first. I feel like a velociraptor claw played into my favor on this one. So I have this little kit bashed action oh, figure yeah. guy wow. where I put the, uh, <laughs> the axe head and gave him a big old schnauzer on the front. Yeah. Got my crystals in my jetpack here. <laughs> and I went for a nice purple blue color scheme because it was pretty. Yeah. There's my guy. Love it. And here's my guy defeating the Megazord. Huge thanks to Miscast and the rest of the Monster Bash crew for having me along on this project. The randomly drawn cards were a fun exercise in stretching the imagination and forcing me to make something I otherwise probably wouldn't have made, and you can play along too with the cards in the description. And since I know you're hungry for more fantastic beasts and where to find them, they're all hiding in the playlist down below. Go check out the other monsters from all the other super talented artists, I think there's enough there to be a feature length Monster Bash viewing experience. They're all so good and each very unique, and I wish we could force our monsters to fight in a no holds barred cutthroat battle to the death. Thanks for watching me make this thing. My name is Stetson, and I'll see you next time.